Now what you see behind me is six companies. And you might think tech companies, you might think maybe some of the Magnificent Seven. In fact, what these co companies have got in common is they're all successful founder-led companies. Now US equities don't really matter to us because we're an Australian equities manager. How does that re relate to Australia? So what we've done is we've gone back and we've had a look at the performance over the last five years of the top 12 founder-led companies in Australia. And we've compared that to the ASX 200. Let's see the results. ASX 200 is up a commendable 65%. Most of your clients would be pretty happy with that over five years. Now, what have the founder-led companies done in Australia? They're up a whopping 420%. That's 420%. So there's something about founder-led companies in most markets that lead them to outperform. And at Solaris, in the last five years, we've owned seven of these 12 companies that you can see here. Now, we've identified six attributes that can lead to outperformance of founder-led companies. The first one has been decisive and agile. So these founder-led companies typically have low bureaucracy in them. They're able to make decisions quickly, and there's not a lot of hurdles. One company we've owned, a founder-led company, for a long time is Goodman Group. A number of years ago, they made a decision to pivot into data centers, and hasn't that been a success? Now, capital allocation, that is important. The average CEO, I've been told, has a tenure of about five years in Australia, so not a lot of time to make long-term capital decisions. Yet founders are typically around for 10 and 20 years. So they make good long-term capital decisions that are generally successful. Alignment, this is probably my favourite. Founders typically have a large amount of their wealth tied up in these companies. So they've got a lot of alignment. And if we go back to Goodman Group, Greg Goodman at, at Goodman has billions tied up, a large amount of his wealth tied up. He's even had equity alignment taken all the way down to the assistant level at Goodman, which is extremely powerful for alignment with both the company and shareholders. Now, these founders typically have deep industry knowledge, having been in the sector for 10, 20, 30, maybe even some of them have been in for 40 years. It's quite extraordinary. They have a very strong vision. And they've built, generally built, a very strong team and performance culture. So these are some of the attributes as to why these companies outperform. What I'm going to look at now is one company that we've got in the portfolio, which is founder-led, we've had for a number of years. It's Life 360. Now, for those of you who don't know Life 360, it's a location sharing app company. Now, you can track your kids, you can track your parents, your grandparents. We even had one lady at the Gold Coast Summit who said she uses it to track her husband. <laughs> I guess each to their own. But this is a hugely successful company. It has 66 million subs uh, subscribers. They're in the top five social media apps in the US. And of that 66 million subscribers, there's only 2 million that are fee paying. So there's a long road to go in terms of converting those non-fee paying customers to fee paying. And despite that, they are cash flow positive. So they're looking pretty good. But what I like about Life360 is that they're founder led. So Chris Hulls, the founder, has a significant amount of his wealth tied up in Life360. They're also decisive and agile. What they're doing now is they're looking to advertise on the freemium model. So that's those 64 million subscribers they're getting no revenue for at the moment. That advertising revenue, which you can see up on the chart there, our forecast, is going to be huge for revenue and profitability growth in the future. Now, we have this company in all three of our funds, the Solaris Core Fund, the Solaris Long Short Fund, and even in the Solaris Income Fund. It is a growth company. It doesn't pay dividends. Our income fund has a dual purpose not just to provide a great dividend yield. In the last 12 months, it was 8.1% net of fees. 
but we also want to grow that capital base. So it's in all three funds. Now, wouldn't it be great if you could go out and just pick a group of founder-led companies and invest and hope for the best? It doesn't quite work like that. There are red flags that you need to identify when you're looking at founder-led companies. The only way to identify these red flags is if you do active investing, and that is critical. So the first red flag is founder selling. Every time a founder sells, he or she reduces the alignment in the business and, and with the shareholders. Now sometimes there is, uh, it's possible that there's a reason for them selling. It might be a divorce. But generally, when you sell, you're reducing alignment, and we don't like seeing that. The other one is governance. So with every, any of these founder-led companies, we want to make sure that we've got a strong management team and we've got a strong board making the founder accountable. Because let's just say these founders have pretty strong personalities. And then the third one is management churn. What we don't like to see is management churn or large management churn in these companies. A live example for us is Fortescue. They've had three CEOs in the last two years. That's too much. That's too much churn for us. Now, I've been through an example of one of the um, companies that we like from a founder perspective. I'm going to go through one now that shows red flags. And as I said, active management is critical for identifying these red flags. So Satire Group. Satire, for those who don't know it, is a, is a marketplace, online marketplace for luxury items. And they've had reasonable success in terms of revenue growth, but the big red flag for us is the founder selling. So you can see on that chart, he has been a regular seller in the last two years. In fact, since they listed, he's gone from 100% to 30%. And as I said, any time the founder sells, they reduce their alignment with shareholders. We don't like seeing that. On top of that, we're worried about the sustainability of this business model. There's been a number of their competitors globally who've gone broke in the last 12 months, including Farfetch'd. So it's important, these red flags, that you can identify them, and active management is how you do it. So in summary, founder investing is a great way of outperforming. At Solaris, we are a founder-led business. We each have a significant amount of our wealth tied up in the equity of Solaris. And through our products, we have great alignment with our investors. In fact, our Solaris performance alignment product only charges a fee when we outperform. Now, we've outperformed in 18 out of the last 24 years as a team, and we're very proud of that. We have three products, the Solaris Core product, Solaris Long Short product, and the Solaris Income Fund. And as I said, our income fund is a little bit different because we're looking to grow the capital as well. We've got that dual purpose of both growing the capital and providing a fantastic yield. And of course, the last slide being performance. So very proud of the team and the recovery we've made over the last few years. If you have any questions, feel free to see your Pinnacle representatives and I'll be here afterwards. Thanks so much. <laughs>